Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusker, here for another special special edition of the show. So I have Katrin Nylapai here from Wine from Spain. I'm standing, I said it right. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's not that hard of a name once you know it, right? And that's anyway, right, so, but don't so, go by how it's spelled. <laughs> exactly, so uh, so Katrin, thank you for hanging out with me. Kind of, you know, talk about, you know, how you got into all this and what made you like get into wine. Wow. Well, you know, I just went through that little conversation with someone downstairs at the event. So <laughs> it is fresh in my mind. Um, right. I, I've actually had the privilege of working with Spain for a really long time. Um, people ask me, how did I get into wine? I said I was a banker. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that industry drove me into wine. Right. Um, par partially, initially, just because I was interested in knowing how to order wine, you know, when you're doing a lot of client entertainment. Um, but my specific interest in Spain, I think really started even before that when I was a student in Madrid, you know, back in my in my university days. And I came back to the U.S. after my, you know, semester abroad and like, why aren't there any Spanish wines anywhere? Okay. And and so, you know, and that stayed with me all those years that I was working, you know, in, in my in my finance industry job. And then eventually, just by serendipity and this confluence of different circumstances, I started going to a lot of wine, you know, taking wine classes, wine tastings, and and started putting some ideas together and right. little by little. And somehow I ended up with the ultimate privilege of working with the government of Spain and promoting Spanish wine. That's that's awesome. Like, you know, there's lots of dream jobs out there, but like you get paid to go promote wine, right? I, I, yeah, and it's not just right. about that's one right. winery, which can be a dream job. Like, you work well, for I one think that's how you can also stay with it for for a very long time because yeah. Spain has just been a, a country and a, you know and a wine re, you know wine region, wine country of many regions um, that has changed so much over the last you know twenty years, and yeah. and so to be it's never there's never a dull moment i mean i was saying even today at this tasting here in in austin which is our first austin um event which we're very excited to be here but it's it's a small version of what we do in in new york or you know los mm -hmm. angeles or miami when we've had this tasting yeah. um on a more regular basis but there's things out here i've never tasted and there's companies that I have never met. And so, you know, they, you're continually learning, meeting new people, new wines, and, and new great varieties. I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been studying wine for close to 15. And there are, all the time, there are things that I don't know, I've not encountered, didn't know existed, you know, whether it's a grape or a region or a winery. Yeah. And yeah, it's, and, you know, it, it's impossible to know it all, right? It is impossible to know it all. And there are some people, and there, those are the MWs and the MSs in the world, you know, <laughs> who, who do put a tremendous amount of effort into, you know, into learning, trying to know every single grape, every single region. Yeah. And, but um, no, I, thankfully I get to, I get to, uh, I like to t taste wines from all over the world, but I do really focus my, my own efforts yeah. on, on Spain. Yeah. So earlier today we had we had a little, a little class with um, two master psalms and uh, and John who from uh, Austin Rennick from the yeah, Austin wine Austin company. Wine, wine company and um, amazing place. I know I said it two episodes ago, but amazing place to go buy wine. Um, the, a few uh, like a few months ago, I came in up to Austin and I made my one my one and only trip. Unfortunately, it was one and only trip there. And yeah, I bought a lot of wine, uh, but. Um, you know, June and Devin have been, you know, inspirational for me as a up and coming psalm uh, or wine person. So uh, it was a great, a great little introduction. Oh, I thought that yeah. I, I, I wasn't kidding when I said I wanted to take them on the road because I thought the three of them, they had such great insight. And I do think, you know, and Devin, um, you know, Devin in particular has been, I think he's inspired so many young psalms mm -hmm. to really get interested in, in Spanish wine. Oh, yeah. And, you know, to, to, 
kind of want to make their careers in working with wines like those that come out of Spain. Oh, yeah. So I, I just think that's I, I was so happy that he was able to do it for us and Absolutely. and put together such an unbelievable panel. They, you know, they they completed each other's sentences. It seemed you know they were they, very. They did, yeah. Like I mean, I've seen June and Devin over the years, like definitely together. I mean, they're 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 like two peas in a pod. Uh, John, I really had never met. Um, I had for, um, but they, they definitely have a great chemistry together. So it was a great little class. We tasted eight, well, nine wines. So it was awesome. So um, your role with Wines from Spain. So kind of talk about what you do for them. Well, I'm the director of Wines from Spain, and we actually work under sort of the auspices of E6, which is the basically the Foreign Trade Institute of Spain, okay. um, and through the through the Trade Commission of Spain. So we okay. we are work, we work with the, we are the Spanish government, and I'll, as as promotional departments of these of of the government, we our role is to really help Spanish wineries gain access to the market, and then those that are already in the market help them. Um, help build awareness, you know, education for the, for the wines that are here. Okay. So we do, it's really twofold. I always say what you see here is a little bit more the visible part of our work, you know, promotion, education, okay. seminars, tastings. And then on the on the other side of it, that's less visible, but very, very important, and especially to, to our, um, to E6, is that we help new Spanish wineries who are not yet in the market gain access to the market. Okay. Um, and then, so today, today was really not a focus on any one region. It was we had a lot of Rioja, but oh, you always have a lot of Rioja. <laughs> you have a lot of Rioja. Rioja is the mainstay for every yeah, yeah. for every portfolio of Spanish but wine. We, but we definitely had uh, some Riospicious. We had some uh, uh, some Cavas, uh, some Penedes. We had some Ribetas. Um, we had some, I'm, I'm missing a couple of reasons. Well, we have, for example, we have wine from Alicante, right? Alicante, the one, the yeah, bottle yeah. right here in front of us. Yeah. And we had one, a bit, we had their red wine, Triga, in our seminar, which right. was the, kind of the final red wine that we had. That was spectacular. Um, there's, a, there, there's, there's a decent representation here of some wines of the, of the Mediterranean um, coast, which, you know, when we're talking about Valencia, Alicante, Jumilla, Yecla. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there seems to be, you know, interest. And I think I really do think the Monastrell wines and like that Triga, they're just perfect yes. for this market, and especially for, you know, this kind of meat, meat centric, whether we're, whether we're talking about a great brisket or a great Texas steak, yeah. the, you know, those wines are ideal. So there's, there's a joke here in Texas about, about wine and, and meat really it's it, Texas is cab and a slab. So cab, cab and something on a slab of beef. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a be 110 degrees outside or like, 20 well it doesn't really get 20 very much <laughs> but if, if it's cold it or hot it, it, it doesn't matter texans just they drink red wine regardless of how hot it is outside where I, I know it's we're not the only ones that do that but it seems like everybody else actually kind of thinks about what the weather's like and they they vary yeah. their the color of the wine they're drinking i'll drink anything i i, I love it all um so is there any like maybe areas in spain that maybe we should we should kind of think of it not not to not to not talk about Rioja because I know they're like the, they're like the big dog right but is there like some areas that maybe we should kind of well pay yeah to? I mean Rioja is definitely very well represented and I would say probably second you know on the red wine side Ribera del Duero mm -hmm. which we did have an example yeah. of that in our seminar today and there's you know quite a few down in the in the main tasting um, but I think I think well the one of the areas that is getting tremendous amount of interest and particularly I think in the Psalm and restaurant community is is the area of Galicia. Okay. Um, we tasted the Mencia from mm -hmm. from Bierzo, from Ribera Sacra, um, you know, the white wines that come starting with of course Albarino, which is the well known white wine, but then Godello um, from the interior parts of Galicia. Uh, you know, all, all along that sort of northwest and then northern coast of Spain, I think there's just the 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 the, the, the freshness of the wine as people are seem to be morphing back towards slightly more, um, you know, l l 
lower, I'd say lower alcohol, more balanced yeah. wines, you know, again, the, you know, the freshness that comes from being wine so close to the coast. Yeah. Uh, but you get that even surprisingly in much, much warmer areas because Spain has such high elevation from the minute you get, you know, just, uh, you know, a few kilometers in from the coast, you know, the elevation rises very, very quickly. So you can be in Alicante or in Valencia and yeah. otherwise very warm areas and yet find wines that are extremely, extremely fresh and not necessarily have to be, you know, 16 degree alcohol blockbusters. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And we definitely had some great examples earlier today at, at, at the, at the um, seminar and then also here today, you know, uh, Mencia or Menthia, uh, wait, Menthia? Menthia. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's like a grape I really like. Um, I thought earlier today they had a really great, uh, you know, great description of it. It's kind of like, uh, actually, John, I think, talked, he said it was like, Del Pino meets Dolcetto meets Gamay. I think yeah. that's what he said, yeah. um, which totally perfect. Like, I mean, as soon as I tasted it, I was like, it's kind of like Beaujolais like. Right, right. Um, but then it's just a little bit of Pinot in there. I can see the Dolcetto. Even June talked about Syrah. Um, so I think he also mentioned Barbera. Barbera, yeah. Right, the yeah. Barbera, right? Barbera. Yeah. So, um, and the, these, you know, some of these wines are just like, maybe not as well known as others. Um, but they're outstanding wines on their own. We don't necessarily have to use comparison, but for the consumer, I was talking with somebody earlier, sometimes for the consumer, it's easier to make that comparison. It's kind of like this, maybe you're familiar right. with. And then we can bring them into the fold on, this is the grape. It's kind of like that, but not really, just to give you a frame of reference. Yeah, you need to give people yeah. something to anchor that, you know, unless they're very, very widely read on different grape varieties, or, yeah. you know, it, I think it does really, really help. We created a little uh, kind of uh, short little video snippets about four grapes to know, and then we did three okay. more grapes to know, and it was a little bit based on that. Like yeah. if you like this, you are gonna, you may like that. You right. know, so yeah. if you like Pinot Grigio, or if you do, if you like Cabernet, and I think that, that we we found, you know, that we had a lot of followers for those short, short for those short videos because yeah. they and they were they were kind of in a comic strip sort of comic form and and I think it, it t gives them t gets the message across. Exactly. You know, exactly. And that, that's not just with wine. I mean, the other things, you know, if you like certain things, sometimes it gets you into liking other things, whether it's wine or food or beer or anything. Um, so um, I know we're not really going to talk about the wine itself, but um, this is from Alicante. So this, this one is from Alicante, yeah. and this is actually, it's called Tarima Mediterraneo. So this is a very fresh, floral, aromatic white wine, perfect summertime wine. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about that temperature outside right now and, you know, sitting at, around that pool at the hotel. Yeah. And, <laughs> this well, would be, um, this would be lovely. Um, it's also, I would, I, we are seeing a lot more of this, the, the use of this wonderful cobalt blue bottle. Um, yeah. There's a wonderful Albarino from Rio Spicius that uses that Mar de Frades and, uh, and, and there's a very, very good, uh, a high kind of Spanish water company, you okay. know, um, it's mineral water, and they they use this cobalt blue too. So. Yeah. So no, the wine is not blue, just the bottle. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not blue. I did have a blue wine. Um, oh. I had a green wine. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> it was okay. It was different. We're, uh, we're not going to talk about that. I'm not going there. Yeah. Anyway, um, so like when I first got here. Um, it was a little humid. It was like about 10.30 I showed up and I sat outside and a little scone, a little hot chocolate. I love hot chocolate. Any time um, of year. So you're like the cab and a slab and cab, is that I what I just want like coffee. <laughs> so either tea or hot chocolate, I just love hot chocolate. But um, yeah, it was a little humid outside. Um, but yeah, this is refreshing, um, really nice. Um, there's, you know, just some good fruit to it. But yeah, I mean, this is just, this is the type of stuff that, yeah, Spain isn't all Rioja. I love Rioja. I love Ribera. I love Tempranillo. Um, but Spain is not all just red wines that are powerful or, or whatever. I mean, we got some awesome, refreshing white wines. And I think pe from there. Pe most people don't realize that Spain has almost equal amount of acreage devoted to white wine than they do to red. Yes, red is the most widely exported um, mm -hmm. Spanish wine, and not all the white grapes are used to make table white wines or drink. You know, yeah. they're they're used for distillation. So, so there, you know, definitely the production and the exportation of of, of the export of red wines is is far greater. But I do like to uh, very often. I do like to you know, lead with sort of a white wine and people think you're, you know, you should be holding a red wine. I mean, Spain yeah. is all about red wine. Well, Spain is a lot about red wine, but Spain is also a lot about white wine. Yes. And, and I think 
I, I take you know sort of particular pride as, as wines from Spain because I think we were very involved in the early um, uh, uh, development or I mean the promotion of Rios Baixas and Albariño and now yeah. to have Albariño be almost you know a household grape name you know people are starting to really recognize yeah. it you know it takes years to do it but it just shows it we, you know when we have hundreds more grapes we could we could you know, put that energy Absolutely. into it. Even today, you know, with, with Godeo, I don't I drink a lot of Godeo. Even, I don't drink a lot of Viota. I don't, you know, um, and Verdejo. I mean, I don't drink a lot of these types of stuff. You know, I know about them, but I don't personally drink them a lot. I just, I'm right. just not exposed to it. Um, it's not as widely distributed, or at least I don't see it as much in places I go. And they're all awesome grapes, and they're all awesome wines. And, you know, again, there's just lots of stuff that Spain has to offer, and, and it was today was yeah. a great way to, to experience that. Well, hopefully this is just the, the beginning of the discovery. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know there's you know, people here who have been following it for a long time, but I don't think that the wines are as available yet. You right. Know? Yeah. So, um, you know, so if you have access, if you have access, then of course you can, you, you can, you know, taste the, the, every wine in the world. Oh, yeah. But um, we have, we have to definitely work on the accessibility of Spanish wines, the availability of Spanish wines yeah. in, in Texas and, and hopefully come back often. I think it'd be awesome. Well, um, I know that time is a little bit of the essence. Um, I, they're all packed. I don't know why I'm looking over there. Oh, they're no. all packing up out there. <laughs> um, is there anything you want to, like, that we have maybe haven't covered about yourself or about wines from Spain or anything that you want to talk about? Well, I, the only thing I was about to say when okay. we were talking about grapes, because I, I, I always feel remiss if I've left out some really important player, in this case, Garnacha. I do oh, think, yeah. you know, how did we how did we just gloss over Garnacha when you were talking about, <laughs> you know, sort of regions and what people are getting excited about. And I think that that Garnacha is just one of those grapes that um, is is indigenous to Spain mm -hmm. um, yes. and and we have a, a huge a number of very old vineyards of Garnacha so people are able to at a very reasonable cost buy some very old Garnacha um, line based yeah. wines and I think we had you know we had we had several examples down on the floor that yes. people that people were able to taste through but that was also another one of sort of my revelation moments um, when I was in the outside of just an hour outside of Madrid in the Vinos de Madrid area and they're doing incredible things with Garnacha that doesn't then the Garnacha is nothing like the Garnacha from Aragon, which is nothing like the Garnacha that is is in Rioja, Navarra, or 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 in you know in Priorat or yeah. Monsat. So so I mean that that's the the kind of thing where you see these these grapes do they're not confined to any one region, but when they are um, when you when you really when they were carefully worked in in regions that we may not even realize are important for that grape, mm -hmm. you find some ex exceptional yeah. wines. It's, it's a great grape. It makes some awesome wines. The Spanish ones that, that I had today are absolutely great expressions of yeah. it. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, how do you forget about that? How do we forget about <laughs> it? And I do think Garnacha is another wine that is very well suited for this market and the food is. that is eaten yeah. here, whether we're talking about, you know, great Mexican food, great, you know, Texas barbecue, right, uh, yeah. great, you know, international cuisine. It, 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 it works with almost all cuisines. It really does. So that's why I had to give my little plug for, for Garnacha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. So we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, uh, thank you so much for coming well, in. Thank you spending for spending with me. Yeah. Spending the day with us. Absolutely. So let's cheers. Here's to the next time. Absolutely. Yeah. Chin, all right, chin. folks. So uh, you click the links above to me up. I'll have links below um, for more, more information about everything. And uh, we'll see you when you get next time.